How's it going guys back on NASCAR Heat 2 and uh, I'm getting a little bit nervous about this rival situation. It's it's getting a little bit out of control. Uh, we, we're on the verge of having five to six to seven rivals and that worries me. That worries me a good amount and hopefully nothing terrible is going to happen but uh, I don't know. Next up we have, uh, let's see, what do we have? We have Sonoma and then we have Daytona. Which, that, <laughs> winning Daytona, that should be a lot of fun. Uh, somehow we won Talladega, so let's see if we could do that. Standings, 27 playoff points. Brad Kozlowski is leading the top of the way after we had our little bump up uh, with him last episode. Uh, so let's see what we can do at Sonoma. Pretty confident here. Uh, I won't lie. I'm, I'm pretty confident at Sonoma. We should be able to get a win. Uh, Daytona, not so much. NASCAR returns to the Golden State for the Toyota Save Mart 350 on PRN. Today, Sonoma Raceway will host the first of two road course events on the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series schedule. We're all set to go 110 laps through the heart of wine country. But this twisting 12-turn, 1.99-mile layout will be anything but relaxing for these drivers. The pace car is coming down to pit road. It's time to go racing. I always wondered how they say the pace car is coming down pit road in the middle of a... A video intro. I'm sorry, guys. I'm, you, you guys just heard it. I don't want to have you uh, listen to Robot Millie for 20 minutes, and uh, that's just that's not what I want to do. So, unfortunately, uh, I'm gonna have to do like a, a voiceover like this uh, for the rest of the episode. Um, I usually like to do for iRacing voiceovers because I have to focus on iRacing. I can't afford to talk and race at the same time on there. It just takes too much focus. Uh, but on NASCAR E2 and, and the console games, I can have a lot more, like, I would say, uh, not, I have a lot of fun on iRacing anyways, but I get to have a lot more fun and get to joke around a lot more. I don't have to put as much concentration on the console games, uh, because they're just not as difficult as iRacing. So, unfortunately, gotta do it this way. Um, but that does give me a couple of opportunities, though, as the career episode goes on, and uh, I'll do what I usually do, you know, try to talk over it, sometimes explain what's going on here and there, but you guys could also see what's going on, and, um, we'll just... We'll talk about a couple of other things as well that's actually going on within the sport right now um, as we go up on Brad Kozlowski here and try to get around him. Uh, but there are a couple of things going on in the sport as we actually get to the gravel and, uh-oh, uh, by Clint Boyer. Okay, that's, yeah, we just we just took Clint Boyer and drove him caution. straight into the gravel. Uh, and that's going to bring out a caution. That's easily one of the most embarrassing things I've ever done on this game. <laughs> that was awful. Um, that was absolutely terrible, and I apologize in every way. Electronachios apologizes as well. She, is do she does not condone for that kind of racing. But uh, we actually had some news in the actual NASCAR world. Um, two things, both involving Hendrick Motorsports. Uh, Chase Elliott with a penalty. Uh, I think it's 25-point penalty. Car Chief suspended two races. Alan Gustin fined 50000 uh, I do not know the exact details of what the penalty en enlisted because I didn't really bother with reading ready, ready, the seven ready, bullet point, point notes that a, uh, apparently spacers and stuff have to con uh, confide to, and apparently they didn't do that. So Chase Elliott, something in the, the rear suspension with the spacers and some stuff uh, with Alan Gustafson and the way this, the car was set up, that was not set up properly as we go and dive bomb everyone, uh, including past Ty Dillon, which I actually saw... I saw Kamikaze's video about Ty Dillon calling him out. I find that to be pretty hilarious. I'm not going to lie. Uh, it, it doesn't look like Kamikaze is going to, uh, to show up unless, unless Ty Dillon uh, offers, I guess, some sort, of, some sort of support to get him out to the racetrack because he doesn't look like he's going to go anyways. But that was, that was pretty cool. That was funny. Uh, I think a lot of people know how Kami uh, kind of works, so that was kind of funny to watch. Um, and it was, was kind of funny to see Ty Dillon actually you know, try something, uh, <laughs> try, try to get him out of the track, uh, as we go ahead and wreck, uh, someone there as well, and like I said, not the best of races so far for us, but back on Chase Elliott, um, it was actually kind of interesting to hear how he was penalized, um, didn't even win the race, so bad, am I right, uh, and, <laughs> I don't know, it's just, uh, there's also five other penalties or six other penalties, um, those are all lug nut issue stuff, not really a big deal, but, Interesting to see that uh, Gustin got penalized for that. Not the first time in 20... Uh, I almost said 2014. Uh, not the first time that team's been penalized. Remember, uh, back in the playoffs last year, they got penalized for putting tape on the rear spoiler or something like that. Um, and they got penalized for that as well. So, not really surprising, but uh, it's at least somewhat nice to see teams pushing the issue. And that's going to be uh, going to be something you see a lot, I think, throughout the uh, rest of the season. 
as we make a move underneath Kyle Busch and try to get him. Newman, we get him. And Suarez, are we able to get him? Yes, we do. Now, on to uh, the second part of the news. Uh, Jimmy Johnson and Lowe's separating uh, after 17 long years. Uh, Lowe's, this is their last season uh, in NASCAR. And that's what worries me the most. It's not that it's their last season with Jimmy Johnson. Uh, Lowe's has been a sponsor within the sport for about, I would say, 25-plus years. They were with Mike Skinner uh, in the 31 car with Richard Childress Racing. And uh, it's, it's going to be sad to see them uh, leave the sport. They're not just leaving Jimmy. They're leaving the sport entirely. Uh, and it's, it's just, you know, business. That's how it goes. Uh, but I remember when NASCAR lost Home Depot a couple of years ago, and everyone thought that was a really big deal. Uh, and now losing Lowe's as well. So you've lost Lowe's and Home Depot, two extremely long-time sponsors in the sport. And uh, as we make a move on Joy Logano here for the lead at Sonoma, which is pretty much we were standard. We are going to be the fastest car here at Sonoma, and we actually would end up winning the race. It was a pretty dull race. That's why I didn't really talk about it much. <laughs> it was pretty dull, but um, you can see we won the race, and we continue on. Tonight. NASCAR returns to Daytona Beach, Florida, and the Daytona International Speedway for the running of the Coke Zero 400, powered by Coca-Cola. A few summer storms rolled through earlier this afternoon, but the weather is cleared and we're all set to go racing. This race marks the beginning of the second half of the regular season. And a win tonight could be a momentum builder as the playoffs are just a couple of months away. All right, back to Daytona. Uh, you can see this is going to be a fun race because we have to we have to be able to get up towards the front and see if we can actually win a race here on speed, but we'll see if we can do that. Um, real quick, finishing up on the Lowe's thing, uh, it's just kind of sad, you know, to see Lowe's leave the sport. And, uh, again, Brian France doesn't come out and say a single word. Uh, that's I'm used to it at this point, honestly. Everyone acting like everything's fine, but it's really not. Um, some people within the sport know that. They know everything's not fine. They know that this is somewhat of a crisis mode for the, spo for the sport, that sponsors are leaving and attendance is down and ratings are down. And, uh, it's, yeah, it's still the Premier Racing League, but it's kind of, it, it's very sad to see the, the leader of the sport be a coward and not say anything about anything, anything that's going on. He won't, he won't come out and at least give uh, some sort of positive remark there's literally he just doesn't say a word and it's it's it's, it's a coward move and uh, unfortunately that's what we have to deal with for now hopefully he sells the, there's been rumors that the france family are looking to sell the sport i mean please do because these guys are ridiculous they're not they're not leaders uh they're just they're cowards they hide behind their positions they don't say anything uh and they're letting this trend continue so until that changes whatever but yeah, just unfortunately, Jimmy. Jimmy will be fine. Uh, Jimmy signed through 2020, so I don't think you're going to see him retiring anytime soon. As we finish 34th in the stage, um, but those are the to two of the main things I want to talk about just in real life news. Um, and now let's get, you know, I'll focus more on the actual video here and try to make it a career mode video. So you can see here, estimated fuel 10 laps. Uh, I don't think it was probably a good time to pit here because we wouldn't have been able to make it on fuel, um, but apparently I do pit. <laughs> I don't even remember what I do. Oh, man. But, yeah, um, apparently I do pit. And uh, we pit. We go ba back to the back. I actually think the, the mindset here was we could make it on fuel because we, we ran a couple laps here. And with the oh, restart of stage two, day. it said estimated laps remaining, Flag. I think, it was 17. But it actually gets knocked down a little bit. Uh, so you can see here we have estimated fuel of 14 laps. And uh, we should be pretty good here for the rest of the race. So let's see if we can get towards the front. A little bit of contact in front of us, and uh, this is where we're just going to have to try to get through the bottom lane. We don't have to do too much here in Stage 2, though, because remember, no one else pitted. Everyone else still has to pit, so stay let's just kind of take our time line, here and just try to, I would say, be extremely patient, patient while trying to gain as many spots as we can because we do have to get the best track position possible since once we do get up towards the front, we don't have that kind of speed. Um, so underneath Timmy Hill with three laps to go in stage two, just trying to make our way up towards the front. A few laps later, we are able to get up to P28, get on the apron there just a little bit, trying to get underneath Joey Gates. But we really cannot afford to get out of the draft. Uh, we were just stuck in the draft the entire time. Uh, right here, you can see we're trying to get a side draft going here, right on that quarter panel of Joey Gates. And we don't really side draft him, but we stall him just a little bit. Uh, in this game, 
the AI have the ability to side draft you more than you have the ability to side draft them. Really, all you can do is just kind of stop them, uh, but you, you don't you don't pull them back. You're just able to stop their momentum for a split second. So that's what we were able to do. Able to get past him. One lap to go in stage two. We're trying to get underneath. Daniel Suarez as well and pull that same move just get our nose right on that corner panel and we're able to just stop his momentum a little bit and get underneath him underneath Austin Dillon the 2500 champ never going to be able to say that normally with a straight face but uh, there we go underneath him there were four wide with Kenseth Dillon and Jimmy and that had to, we had to just be a little bit careful there take our medicine and just call it back there because don't want to be too aggressive we have 11 laps of fuel remaining Four laps in stage two, we should be good to make it on fuel here, so that's why we decided to pit. And as we pass Austin Dillon, we pass Jimmy Johnson, and now we are underneath Ty Dillon. We're able to pass him, and it looks like we're going to come around and finish in 22nd for the second stage, and that's where we will be. So, good position. Uh, now, this is where everyone else should pit, and we should uh, either maybe take no fuel um, or take a little bit of fuel. So we have estimated fuel 10 laps, laps remaining 12. So we will pit. Going to take half a can of fuel and no tires. So that's the strategy game that we are playing here. And it looks like it should work. Uh, once we press A here and we advance, we get up to ninth. So the, the negative side is <clears throat> we're not on new tires, but the positive side is that really doesn't matter. So <laughs> that's the good thing. And we are ninth. Green flag is back out. Let's see if we get a good restart here. Chase Elliott is up there in the lead. So let's see if we go run him down. We get underneath Stenhouse who leaves the bottom for some reason. And that's good news for us. We get through the gears really nicely again. A fourth gear underneath Dale Hart Jr. Three wide underneath Kevin Harvick as well. We're going to try to creep underneath Boyer there. And we barely get there. And that is good news. Stenhouse is able to actually give us a really nice shove there. Wasn't really expecting that, but uh, he was able to give us a nice little push of air. And now we are in second place. And this is where we're just going to have to be patient. Can we somehow manufacture a run? As you guys can see uh, previously in previous races, we weren't able to do it. We have a little bit of a run. Can we get underneath Elliott? And we do. Now, do we have the speed? We've never really been able to pass the leader before. Do we have the speed to get past him? And we do. So that really is... The first time we've actually passed the leader by ourselves and uh, been able to get back in the lead. So now let's see if we can block, which we're going to do for seven laps. Is it really possible? Probably not. Stenhouse and then Elliot. We're going to be blocking two lanes, uh, and it just doesn't. I'm not really confident in it. But let's see if we can do it. We're going to try to run the middle of the two lanes, just run the middle of the track. That week we'll make quick moves. There we go. We block Elliot, and we uh, have Stenhouse stalled out just a little bit. Stenhouse pulls all the way down to the bottom. We're going to have to block him. We don't do it. Elliot's up top. We're three wide in the middle. And uh, that's just the hardest part. When those two cars separate completely and one goes all the way high and one goes all the way low, there's just no way we could block both of them because they're both getting the same run. So it's impossible to block both of those guys. But we're able to stay in third side by side with Chase Elliott. And we're trying to get into that position where we clear Elliott and get behind Stenhouse, but unfortunately Stenhouse pulls up, gives Elliot the draft, and we don't have it. Now we do, but Elliot has just a good enough run where with five laps to go, he looks like he's going to be able to clear us. We're trying to get to that quarter panel. We do get back into the draft of Ricky Stenhouse Jr., and we're able to do a pretty nice job here of getting into that slipstream, but unfortunately this is just a bad position that we're in. We, there's no run we can get. The way we were able to get past Chase Elliott we were able to have a, a, a little bit of help from behind. We timed the run really well, and we entered the corner right on his quarter panel. If we if we last any longer, uh, let's say we try doing it down the back straightaway, it won't work. We have to do it entering the corner. So we got to be really careful here in how we time this move, and we just can't get past Chase Elliott. I mean, we just can't do it. So we decided to fall back here a little bit, and we just got to see if we get a bigger run. And the thing is, we don't have any help from behind right now. Uh, they're side by side, but we have a better run on Chase Elliott. We're going to try to get down low with four laps to go. And let's see if we can maybe get underneath Truex. We decide to stay behind, and we are in third position. Now it's time to just kind of time this run here down the back straightaway. Let's see wherever Stenhouse goes. Maybe we can follow, but for now, we're just going to leave a little bit of a gap. We're going to actually help Truex here. Truex is going to get to the bottom lane. He looks like he might get around Stenhouse, and now here's the key moment. We have to be able to clear Stenhouse. If we can do that, I think we have a chance, and we do. So now we are in good position, coming to three laps to go. We're going to back out of the throttle here 
and try to get a little bit of a push from either Stenhouse or it looks like Casey Kane's behind us as well. And we're gonna have to time this to a point where we can't be in the lead for too long. So it looks like we're gonna have to do it on the white flag lap. So we're gonna let Truex kind of sit out there for a little bit. Uh, let's make sure we don't he doesn't pull out away too far, but we're gonna have to time it really, really well. Two laps to go. Uh, it's not really the time yet to do it. So right now we're just trying to block Stenhouse and Kane. And unfortunately, Stenhouse gets to the outside of us and we really need a push from Casey Kane. This is exactly not what we need. This is really, really bad. Uh, so we got to be able to clear Stenhouse. He's going to be able to get a little bit of a side draft on us. But we have Truex in the slipstream. So that's really good. Uh, so Stenhouse has nothing. We have Truex. We're able to get a bit of a pull here. And it looks like we should be able to get clear of Ricky Stenhouse. And we do. So... We back out of the throttle again. We get back into that position that we were just a couple laps ago, but this time it's the white flag, so we can't let Truex get too far away. So we're in a pretty good position here. Casey Kane looks like he's cleared Ricky Stenhouse, which is good news for us, as Casey Kane might be able to help white us with that little push air. of air. That's all we need. We just need some air to be able to push us to get behind Truex. So white flag lap. We are not lifting any time from here on out. We have to get a run on Martin Truex Jr. We're in a pretty good position here on the white flag lap. And it looks like we should be able to get a run coming out of two. So here we come. We're going to try to do the same thing we did to Chase Elliott. Unfortunately, Casey Kane's not really behind us. He's on the bottom lane. And he's not hes not giving us that shove. And we're not getting a run. We're completely stalled out here at 202 miles per hour. And we're just stalled. And right there, I think that's the end of the race. At the mo that moment, there's no way we're going to be able to get back to him. We had to be able to get a run entering turn three. That's the only way we could really pass these guys. And uh, unfortunately, we didn't get the run. You can see here, we're just stalled. Casey Kane's on the bottom of the track. We're stalled out. Truex is going to come around and win the race. We're just not able to figure out how to win at Daytona. We haven't done it yet, and that's unfortunate. It's, we just don't have we don't have that speed. It's possible, but we haven't been able to do it yet, and that's kind of unfortunate. Um, but it is what it is at Daytona International Speedway. Uh, so that is after the, this episode, guys. I know it, it must have been really weird and different and... Uh, I don't want to do it like this anymore. I want to do it to where uh, we just do the, the the live calm way. Unfortunately, like you guys heard, the audio messed up. That happens here and there. It hasn't happened to me in over a year. So it was bound to happen to me again. It happens at least once a year, I would say. So unfortunately, guys, if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. Um, and if you like the video, make sure to like button. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Instagram, all that stuff. And uh, I'll see you guys later. Hope you're having a great day. Uh, we'll make sure to do live comms from now on. Peace out. Even if I tried, even if I wanted to, and I can't change. Even if I tried, my love, my love, my love, she keeps me warm.